All right, part one of this video talked about how I sold four cars in just about a month and a half. My fleet went from six to two, two being one is Bruce, the old vintage Volvo that's gonna be in my life for a long time, and the other, the Prius, the daily driver, the boring car that has little excitement, but huge practicality is a financially good decision responsible car, let's call it that. And that's eating my vegetables. So let's have a little meat and potatoes here. Moving on to the part two of finding a car. I was wanting an SUV. I wanted it to be big. Watch part one if you haven't. And I wanted it to have the luxuries, the amenities. I wanted it to be in good shape, but a good price, not something that was going to break the bank. You know, under 10 grand is kind of the limit. Um, you know me though, <laughs> I'm cheap. I didn't want a project car specifically, see Miata, I had that. I had the S60R restoration series that I did. And, you know, I'm gainfully employed working on old Volvos right now. But I wanted something that had amenities without necessarily being tacky. But it was important to me that it had utility. And most importantly, this car needed to have... Personality! First up, and my biggest itch to scratch, the Land Rover Discovery 2. I was looking at the 0304 years. There was a lot about this car that interested me. Driving it, however, was a different experience. He said Land Rover is the company that makes owners into mechanics for 70 years, so we're gonna go look at a Disco 2. I've wanted a Disco 2 for a long time, and I'm excited. Oh. Wow. All right. I wanna get it up to speed. You wanna record for me? I really like these windows. I love this visibility. This thing is kind of a pile of crap. Yes. Wow, that's a lot of nice torque. Three different oil leaks? Yeah, power steering's leaking. There's an oil leak on the right side. Interior's not great. It's dark, so it's a little forgiving. Now, on his post, he said, like, interior's nine and a half out of ten. Right. I don't know about that. We get in and then he's like, by the way, this is uh, rattling, the windshield's broken, the <laughs> window switches are falling off. Here's the window switch. It works, you just gotta put it back in. So far I'm not leaning towards buying it. Yeah, I'm not really, not really sold on this one. I mean, as a vehicle, I think it's awesome, but I think this one's... Oh, it, just drive, it shifts so smoothly and it drives so easily. Like it's luxurious, it feels luxurious. I love the steering wheel. It's got this weird like angle of the, the shape. You gotta feel it with your hand at some point. You know, it's like it's oh yeah, it's sort of tilted out instead of being like round. Yeah, round. It's it kind of conforms to your fingers. Yeah, puts your wrists in a forward motion. I love the color, the color combo specifically. But Great color combo. I just don't know. I can justify the work involved. That's how it goes, right? You buy something cheap. You gotta fix it, or you buy something expensive, and uh, enjoy it. it's fine. 150,000 miles. Is that a lot or a little for a car like this? Average. So maybe that wasn't the right one per se. The guy's nice. He's a sheriff. But a sheriff. what about another Land Rover? Yeah. Is there a better example out there? The car's not stolen. It's impounded. Hey. I said I wanted big, but this thing feels... Huge. But uh, it's a nice neighborhood. Oh look, Rover number two. Oh, she just got a wash. Is that the one you want? That's the one I want. Hi, good morning. Is that on drive it? I forgot I didn't have gas. Ba oh, <laughs> gas. Yeah. gas. Yeah. Cool. And he said the battery was dead? Yeah, yeah the, cause I don't use it. Yeah. So if you don't, like, obviously you don't use it. How long have you had it? Close to three years. Okay. Yeah, and so it's my it's my camping car, so when we go camping, that's the one I take. Second Land Rover of the day, we're rolling. And it's um, it's okay. It's not great. I mean it drives really nicely, but the AC is not working. She says that it will when you start driving, and so yeah, I think it's got a, a cooling fan problem. The engine may or may not have overheated once. That's the thing to look out for on these cars because if you get them hot, the head gaskets will fail, or the heads uh, as a whole will fail. It's been a pretty good adventure vehicle, though. She's taken it to New Mexico and out here as well. Ooh, these are lazy brakes. Smooshy. But drives really nicely. 
double sunroof. It's the SE7. It's got seven seats. I'm not crazy about the black interior. I think I'd want a camel interior. I like those a lot. I feel like my Subaru could pick up quicker than this. It does. Yeah, this one feels a little bit slower than the one I drove last time. But I was just getting in a pre out of a Prius. And this one, it's out of the BMW. Yeah, that is true. So, acceleration is nothing compared to those two cars. But the, lane, the Range Rover I've been in, the newer ones, those have like 400 horsepower on them. Is that front wheel drive it's now? It's four low now. Yeah, that's low, baby. That's four low. That's just to get you started in the sand. It does not beep in neutral. And we're back. Pole drive works. So I went from the Miatas to the BMWs, and now I'm with Brett. Uh, Brett's driving the XC90. We're going, the Land Rover thing didn't work out. So instead, I'm going for the next most exciting thing that's not a 90s minivan, and that's the Subaru Baja. They all have pretty high miles. How many miles are on your Subaru? I have around 270,000 miles. And you've got a 2006 Legacy? 2008. An, an 08 Legacy, it's the 2.5 liter. They're all really similar engines, the EJ25s. So this Baja, it's an automatic, so that means that my family can drive it. Because, you know, in LA you gotta accommodate more than just yourself. And it's half car, half truck, so I'm pretty excited. Half car and half truck. It's the Subaru Baja. It's from Oregon, it's got 190,000 miles, and it's kind of okay, and it sounds really bad, but it's okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, you poor thing. Oh. Oh, you poor thing. Oh, you poor thing. The steering wheel looks nice. So, what's your first thoughts? My f I've just been repeating the phrase, oh, you poor thing, over and over and over. Yeah, I feel like this is probably not a great, good one. This car is a rusty, rusty CV. Pile of junk. But let's see how it does on this bump. That's okay. It's okay. <laughs> if I sit upright, that's my head. I've moved the seat up too much for me to actually be back here. Right, what are we doing right now? So we're picking up a Baja, or we're taking a look at another one. This is Baja number two, it's got a five speed, but it's still a non-turbo, and boy, these things are slow. Anyway, fingers crossed. But it is a stick. <laughs> All right, here we are. All right, so here it looks like. Here's the Baja. Boy, she's pretty. She's got them General Grabbers on there too. Nice. General Grabber sounds like a bad nickname. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see what we think. Okay. Yum. Yum, yum, yum. So this is a common spot, the corner, for rust. Yeah. But it's been fixed here. Actually, I, I bought a car last month. I want to make it like my road trip car. Yeah. But right now I got a full-time job. So oh, yeah, yeah. Finish. Oh, I get that feeling. Yeah. Cool. So when you bought it, did you put it into your name? Did you transfer the title and uh, register? Yeah. Okay, so it's still in the person who sold it before? Yeah, but okay. I, I can write the bill of sales. Okay. I got everything now. Okay, great. Ready. It's just been... Cut out and uh, fiberglass. Yeah, a there is a bit of rust. Uh, let's have a look underneath. And you know what? I think spiders really like Subaru. Uh, same, same story. If you come on the side, you can see some rust right down there. I don't know why, but Subarus get more rust than any other cars. Because they're great snow cars, and people buy them when they have to live in the snow. Yep, like me. Is that 212? Yeah, 212. Let's see how she sounds. Much better than the other one. It's so much quieter than the other oh, engine. No. Do you remember the other one was really loud? Yeah. Sounds great. 
The rust is worse on this one, surprisingly. Isn't that funny? But, um, can we go for a drive? Yeah, sure. Okay. Wow, this feels just like being in my old Foresters. Oh my gosh, these tires. So weird. Oh, they're so noisy. What was that phrase I kept saying earlier? Poor thing? Yeah. Poor thing. This is just another rusty, tired Subaru. Why do we keep doing this to ourselves? So it's an NO for you, or is we it still? It's just, it sounds like we've got a flat tire, but it's just a noisy general grabbers. You have like a lot quicker pickup than the other one. It's a better engine. The other one had 190,000, this is 212, but it just, it's quieter and it's got some oomph to it. It's fun to drive. You were just unsure about it? Look at these cute little beagles. I'm not unsure about it, I just don't want to spend five grand on a rust bucket. Ah, I totally understand what that yeah. means. Yeah. This is not the one, Brett. Ah. It's actually really nice, it's fun to drive, and it drives really well, it's just the tires are weird, they're oversized for something that I would want. I would, I'd want to go back to city tires, and it's rusty, so sorry, next. Having just talked myself out of the Land Rover Discovery 2s, I'm on my way home and I was feeling a little down because the Bajas also were a bust. And then something caught my eye. For the last two and a half miles of traffic, an LR3 was alongside me, adjacent to this squarey behemoth. I went and thought, I never really gave these things a shot. I always thought they were too new, too unreliable, too expensive. So I go online and I start looking. What is the LR3? And then I fell in love. Do you ever get so excited about something you just start jumping? Still shopping for another car. Everything that was okay and cool about the Discovery 2 is a little bit better, more refined, redesigned, reimagined in the LR3, really. They're my price range, and they're great, and everyone loves them. And they have a V6 engine if I want to get 17 miles per gallon instead of 15, so we'll take a look at one right now. It's got that V6. This is a 2005, it's the first year. Oh, she is big. Down, 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 bound to get down, 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 it's big and silver. Down to get down, to get down, to get down, to get down. It fits seven full size adults, and they have to crawl in through the back, and the seats fold down into three pieces, and then it's all flat. 5,900 pounds, and it's mined for about the same price for a dollar a pound. And I've run out of lyrics, but I'm about to just drive this Land Rover. Bow, bow. Well, we're standing next to an Xterra, and uh, the Rover doesn't really seem to be uh, so gigantic. Let's see. The width is about the same. Split tailgate's gonna be really cool. I love it already. I mean, it's really clean, so. The first Rover was really nice. But it's uh, a V6, and the V6 is kind of a boring, slow, underpowered thing. Uh, really nice car otherwise. It, I think it's enough power, but it's just why sell myself short if the V8 has just as many pros, if not more, and not very many cons. This one's lifted and it's beautiful. The search continues. What is this key, dude? This is funky. Anyway, let's see. I, I think I'm gonna go for the gold one. And then I thought to myself, well, let me at least check a dealership out, you know, find out exactly how much I'll end up paying in taxes and fees. This was a $9,000 gold LR3 that was in really great shape. They did a bunch of work on it from a radiator to a valve body on the transmission. You know, already the V8 is so much better than the V6. But I knew that I would end up going over budget. After dealer fees and taxes and registration, California is not a cheap place to buy a car from a dealership. Forget about it. The suspension wise, you're 100%. So it affirmed I was better off going private party. It also affirmed that the LR3s that are nice are a little bit out of budget for me. Perhaps that was an itch that I would have to let grow just a little bit longer, along with my investment portfolio, until later I could afford one. And then late one night, I thought to myself, why not look at the XC90s again? If I'm going for a truck that's gonna weigh 6,000 pounds, why not just go for something the biggest that Volvo has? So after what felt like a very dramatic week, of just shopping around and talking myself in and out of different cars, I seem to have gone full circle and gone right back to my roots.
This one's fun. It's got the, uh, well, I say fun, but I haven't even driven it yet. It's got the 3.2 liter, uh, naturally aspirated inline six. A weird accessory belt on the side here, but, you know, 200 car, I think. Split tailgate, how fun. Do you have space for adult? It's, I just sat back there, it's really tight. It is, it's no Land Rover. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah, it's doable. It's like, well, let's pile in. Let's put it in or no. I love this car. Ooh, dirty. <laughs> uh, I gotta stop wearing nice clothes. I try to dress expensive for these things. Anti skid temporarily off. Why are you off? Okay, so it's a two wheel drive inline six. Here we go. Uh, the V8's gonna have all the power. This is just to get a feel for the car, so that I have a baseline comparison for when I drive the R Sport tomorrow. R Sport, what is this, an Audi? R Design. <laughs> Someone's clanking around down there. Ooh. Something's up with that front, right? This is a beautiful area. We're it in is. San, San Marino. I feel so safe. Uh, you're so right. I mean, dad, dad file unzipped and now it's... <laughs> Unlocked. Children's. <laughs> gotta take care of the kids. Right. I'm getting an idea of how much better or how much worse tomorrow's car is gonna be. This is me managing expectations. Something else. Winter mode starts you in second gear. Okay. Which is uh, cool for getting traction in snow and ice. But not here. <laughs> It's kind of nice because like the salt and stuff would really damage like paint and stuff. Yeah, so California like is so good for not, not yeah. damage. And it's not too dry that the plastics are all ripped up and cracked. Second XC90 of the day. This one is a V8. It's 120,000 miles. That's exciting. But it's $2,500 because the check engine light's on. Uh, the guy says it's $150 to fix. I'm like, dude, just fix it if that's going to, you know, if that's all it takes. But uh, I'm really going to reserve judgment until I look at the thing. And I'm in uh, whatever's just south of Mid City. It's a, it's a rough neighborhood, but um, I'm like, <laughs> all right, I'll uh, reserve judgment until I see the car. But um, you know, at $2,500, it's I'm not expecting a lot. This is mostly to get a feel for what the V8 is like, just like I got a feel for what the inline six was with my previous test drive. All right, here we go. Yeah, what did I say? Bad neighborhood. <laughs> it's fun. It reminds me of the Harley Quinn uh, Volkswagens. Hey, how are you? Hello. I'm David. Nice to meet you. Thank you. So tell me the story of this car. Um, well, I recently just got it. Okay. And um, my sister wants a smaller car because yeah. this is too big for her. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, what's what's up with the check engine light? Um, um, the check engine light is on. It says the system is running lean, bank one or bank two. Bank one or bank two. Yes. Well, no, bank one and bank two. And bank two. two. Okay. Yeah. And um, the registration is it's still registered this year. It just needs the plate. Okay. This is interesting. Just having it right up on the airbox. Right. Yeah. Just just flip the throttle. So smooth. Really nice. All right. Thanks, Ash. You can shut it off. a dumb grin on my face because that car is fun to drive. It was a complete pile and it, it wouldn't last another year on the road. And the reason why the license plates are missing are probably because the valid registration is on some other car illegally. That's a judgment call on the, on the character of the neighborhood, but uh, it was just that V8 is the right choice. Yeah. All right. So tomorrow, our sports, our design, our design, orange, a nice black leather interior for a really okay price. And this little thing caught my eye. I went an orange XC90. How fun is that? It's got the HIDs, it's got the premium wheels, and if you zoom in very closely on one photo, it had blue gauges. Those blue R gauges. I was like, is this an R model? Did they even have that in 2007? I started rage searching the internet to find out what shade of orange was this car. The closest thing I could find was passion red. I was like, there's not, it's not red, it's orange. Look at this photo from the original auto show. You can't tell me that's red. 
And then I do the thing where I sound very interested without trying to sound pushy, like, please let me see your car, you know, not wanting anybody else to snatch up this little car at a pretty good price. Now, high mileage might be an issue. It's at 180. People are talking about transmission issues is one of the big problems on these V8s, as well as just common oil leaks on the valve cover gaskets. I started doing my homework and I found out these are actually pretty cool cars. Fuel economy is not great, but it's also better than the Land Rover just by a few points. I lined up a couple of Volvos to look at in Orange County and had two V8s to compare that day. It's the start of a new week and um, I'm back with Brett. We are looking at an XC90. This is another V8. This is a dealership, like a small dealer. Hopefully it's a fun car. The price is okay, but that orange reddish one I've still got my heart set on. We're going to see that about an hour after this. This jasmine green color, whatever it was called, my mother sure would have loved this car, but really growing up isn't about finding your parents' approval and everything. It's about individuating your own life. While I would have preferred like a camel color interior for the LR3s, the Volvo beige leather didn't really age well, and so I knew the black was the way to go with these cars. The moment I laid eyes on it, okay, oh, so I was sold. <gasps> oh, it's beautiful. I knew this was the one. Hey there. Hello. This one's great. Don't let me stop you. Yeah, it's red. How long have you, you had it? For almost the, a little over a year. Okay. He, he drove it to work and back, which is like not even a 15 minute drive, like yeah. there and then 15 minutes back. And then, any uh, maintenance? The only thing is the uh, automatic transmission filter, which I have. It's Flowers. So I at least the car, it looks good. Uh huh. The one thing I liked about the other car was everything was a lot more together. There's some things falling apart in the mm -hmm. seats. Mm -hmm. I think the only thing that this car doesn't, and I love the blind spot monitoring in this. Yeah. But the only thing, some of the fading and yep. some, but ever anything other than that, it's a pretty good car. But I still would have taken the other car because I think the other car was so nice. for forty eight hundred dollars, our agreed upon price. You're thinking I would I would I would have taken the other car. You would have taken the other car, which would run us almost twice as much. It would that have been a, it would have been an that eight would have been eight thousand dollars. You know car. what? You know what? For what you're getting, it's totally worth it. I think actually now that I think of it, steal. Because I'm willing to spend a little bit more for the exciting car. Uh, yeah, that transmission's gonna need service for sure. Yeah, the, so the, the, the other car didn't need any. All right, so um, we should give these flowers to the person. Wow, if everything goes smoothly, I'm gonna pick out the bestest flower for her and go, this is for you. I am so happy that I just bought this car. It is red after all. Does this car have problems? Yeah. Is it a happy ending? Mm, so far, so good. Actually, I just got the title a few days ago and I'm ready to start doing work on it. There was a small scare with the transmission and the check engine light, but I think a fluid change is holding us over for at least the time being. This transmission could probably go at any given point, so I'm not gonna hold my breath. I'm just gonna enjoy driving a car that I got for a pretty good price. And in a few days time, I'm gonna be installing this thousand-ish dollars of parts from FCP Euro. They've got that lifetime warranty, so I know that I'm covered for the rest of the life of this car on brakes, suspension bits, and whatever else I find that I put in these boxes. So stay tuned for that next video. It'll be coming up very shortly. Thanks for watching.